and there's actually a pretty simple answer to the reason why the DEC is so conflicted. Most oil and gas producing states, the environmental uh, regulatory task is separate from the minerals management task. So the, the problem that you're faced with here in these FOIL documents indicated is, is that basically you, you're functionally, you're dealing with a minerals management agency. I mean, it's called a DEC. It has nominally, it has a, an environmentalist as its titular head. But it, you're really, in this, in this regard, at least for this activity, uh, shale gas development, you're, you're, you're dealing with a, a minerals management group. When you go to, when we go as environmentalists, um, to, to see the DEC, we, we were ushered in to see Jack Dahl, who's in charge of well permitting, you know, and he just gives us a blank look because, you know, water, you know, that's not his bailiwick. Same thing with Allison Crocker, the attorney that was in the colloquies with uh, Tom West. Uh, they're basically in the well permitting business, you know, God bless them. There's agencies that do that in other states, uh, but they're not they're not the, that activity or the, the environmental activity is not co-opted, uh, coerced, and subordinated to the minerals management function because it's a separate agency. So, I mean, that's the problem, if you will. It's a structural problem. I'm not sure how it came about, but it, it would have to be fixed uh, because you, because the problem is you would never be able to disassociate the influence of the well permitting function, Jack Dahl, Allison Crocker, that gang from the environmental regulatory, it, as long as they're under the same head. One of them is gonna predominate, and you know, guess which one it's gonna be. As a, for instance, and this goes back, based on these, these foiled emails, this goes back at least to 2005. Well, let's say 2008, West had a meeting with Jack Dahl. He had seven people from Chesapeake with him, March 26, 2008. He goes in there, and they, they were gonna do the, the uh, spacing unit size, the size of the gas well spacing. Get it, uh, you know, as a draft, and they're also going to address the setback of gas well from the property boundary. Well, so Chesapeake marches in there with seven attorneys, you know, see Jack and to Allison, and he and they put down this 640 acres a square mile, one section, as a spacing size, and they say, well, the, and the and the setback of the gas well from the property line would be 330 feet. Well, guess what? <laughs> Uh, existing U New York race that might have had environmentalists involved with it, or hydrologists, or geologists, or scientists. Um, there, there was it was up to 1,500 feet was the setback at the time, and of course when you know when West and his compadres marched out of there, the, the DEC changed that, and now they proposed it in the S guys magically, 1,500 feet went to 330 feet. There is no environmental review. And mind you, I'm not being cynical. I'm just telling you that there is no environment there. There is no hydrologist, nobody to review it. They even say no. It was okay with Dahl. He issued oil permits. You know, God bless him. That's just one instance. Now, I brought with me some of the statements that I've uh, worked on, which I can submit to you. The first two are a pair of letters that I wrote to DEC Commissioner Joseph Martens shortly after he and I were both keynote speakers at an EPA conference on environmental health. And in these letters, I detailed new research findings on fracking-related air pollutants and associated risk for heart disease. I received no response. The third is a letter from October 11th, signed by many hundreds of health professionals and scientists. It asked the DEC for a comprehensive health assessment. We received no reply. The fourth, from December 2011, is a fully referenced review that speaks directly to the cancer risks posed by drilling and fracking operations. It's signed by dozens of cancer advocacy organizations representing more than 100,000 New York cancer survivors and their physicians. No reply from the DEC. By contrast, the gas industry's uh, concerns and queries over the same time period were met by much more than stone walls by the DEC. So now we know, thanks to the Environmental Working Group, that, uh, that it's, the industry representatives enjoyed throughout the period of the s guys's creation revisions, lively email exchanges, phone conversations, face-to-face -face meetings, and at the very least, sneak peeks at the manuscript in progress. So the paper that is supposed to provide our governor the science that he needs to make a crucial decision was crafted with the guidance of the gas industry, not the New York State scientists or doctors. So little wonder that this draft document bears little resemblance to an impartial comprehensive scientific review. It does, this document looks nothing like this, the science reviews that I've prepared. No wonder that after four years of study, we cannot answer fundamental questions like 
Will fracking in New York kill more people than it employs? Will, who will be harmed by fracking? And how much will these injuries cost?